If you're an average player, you want to be left alone, right? Because you want to be able to slide by. If you're a good player, you want to be coached. If you're a great player, you want the coach to tell you the truth every day. Did I hustle on that play? Did I make the right read? Did I play the guy with the right leverage? You want to know every play. Because you know why? They want to be perfect. Everybody here makes a choice to do one of those three things. Welcome to the GOAT Consulting Podcast, a podcast dedicated to people striving to be a GOAT, the greatest of all time, serving it up in a way that you can get it in all stages of life. Hey, I'm Colby Jubenville, and welcome to another episode of the GOAT Consulting Podcast right here in studio and VC Productions, always at the table today. To my right, my good friend, the champion of the GOAT family of brands, and has a new truck all the way from Murfreesboro, Tyler Burnett. Tyler, we're oh, wow. so glad. People notice your truck and wherever you go. Get excited. Yeah, we're going to talk about that I today. Reckon, I reckon so. To the left from Brentwood, we call him the LinkedIn Whisperer. you got a cool shirt on today. Even after yes. Christmas, you're still celebrating Christmas. Yes. John Byers. John, we're so glad you're here with us at the table. You you really pushed and lobbied for these topics today. We're excited about talking about them. Yeah. But, but first, tell well, us. Happy some, New Year. Same to you. I, do, I don't even know. I don't even feel like we're there yet, but we are. I know. This um, is, yeah, tell this, us about the shirt. Yeah, this is uh, a f- one of my favorite, one of the last good things. That it's a puck. The, uh, one of my former favorite companies in the world, Project 615, <laughs> who's failed me over the last year. But one of the last good things they did in 2020, because yeah. they haven't done anything good this year, they've turned into an old woman t-shirt company. <laughs> Very vocal today about we that. We are not allowing them to be a sponsor any longer. However, I am uh, very... Uh, much in love with this shirt, which is the lamp from a Christmas story in the mm. form of a predator's hockey skate with the shade on it. And check us out on YouTube if you haven't before. You can see the shirts. Yeah. Every episode with John brings a different shirt to it's the uh, to the show. Uh, Tyler is not in his branded goat. First time ever. Goat wear today. No got little my, goats. Got my hat on. The, uh, the, the global audience expects to see that. How about, about these uh, New Year gifts from our friends at VCE? Yeah, VC Production in studio in VC Productions. You know Beautiful that is tumblers. That is a habit that, of yours is wearing branded, wearing goat branded clothing, mm. and yeah. that's that a good kinda, segue. Yeah, that kind of leads us into our discussion. You know, a year ago we we you, we really wanted to look at and understand and, and talk about the difference between habits and goals, right? Yes, and habits are greater than goals. Habits are greater than goals. Yeah. But today, a year later, we want to dig even deeper into that. Yes. Right? And look into, if you're thinking about your career, your life, your business, your relationships, and thinking about what does 22 look, how does 22 look differently for us, for me, than it did in 2021, one of the places we think you should start is looking at the anatomy Mm -hmm. of the habit. Yes. And you love this idea. It's the blueprint. And and really, this comes from... Um, and, and let me just go ahead and share my goat because it will make sense. This comes from the, the book Atomic Habits, James Clear. God bless. That's my freaking goat. You got, that's uh, my, that's my goat. Uh, it's not mine. Well, it makes sense. That's too easy. First time ever. We've had the same goat. It is. James Clear. I gave every, I gave every <laughs> one of mine. Literally, it's literally right, right there. Wow. He's got, he's got I, notes. I, I got notes. notes. Yep. Right Look there. At that. God, mm, he's building wow. a new habit over there. <laughs> that's right. And I love it. So this comes from the mind of mine and Tyler's goat, James Clear, Atomic Habits. I gave every one of my clients his book this year and and a few others because it's one of the best books that I've ever read. And it 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 is a book about habits are more important than goals. And here's how I wrote it. And I, I don't think this is a James Clear quote, but certainly this whole episode I would dedicate to him. But here's how I wrote it. Goals is what we do. Habits are who we are. Hmm. And so as we will get into this episode and we start talking about how do we create habits, how do we form and uh, use habits to form who we are and really who we want to be, yeah. that's what this episode's about. We're going to get super practical and we're going to talk about uh, the anatomy, as you put it, the anatomy of a habit. The goal is the destination. A habit is a lifestyle. Well, tradition has has taught us to set goals, right? Every every new year, we say mm-hmm. we we've got to create what New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. I hate that. 
that I've never liked phrase. That. I just don't, I don't want to say hate it. I just don't like it. I've never liked that. But we know what drives real change is habits. Yes. And so my goat is not clear. I thought that was way too easy. It's a guy named Max Dupree. Okay. He's a furniture mogul from the 1960s. And he said this, we cannot become what we need to become by remaining who we are. We cannot become who we need to become by remaining who we are. So profound. Now, why I say that is this. Why does that matter? Why does that matter? Because here's why. In our 20s, in our 30s, in our 40s. And in our 50s. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, you 50-year-old. That's right. Thank you. Now, we literally do have the different stages of life now. We do. The 30s, the 40s, and the 50s. It's come full circle. And and I just realized that I didn't go through and set the stage for all that, which is really disheartening for me. Well, we'll have to go back to the archives. And do it. But here's, here's what I wrote down, why that matters. Why does that matter? Because at each stage, at some point, and I'm asking you if you feel this way, too, we all feel stuck. Yes. You say stage or like day. Stage. <laughs> Because I feel like days, I f- there's days that I feel yes, at the stuck. stuck. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And so how, then it begs the question, why does it matter to talk about the difference between goals and habits? To me, the difference is if our 20s, we get in the game, 30s move up in the game, 40s try to stay in the game, and our 50s finally say, what do we really want? To me, it's because in each stage, we find ourselves stuck. Jerry Maguire did. Absolutely. And that's that's the whole premise for me in this podcast is he found himself stuck and how do I get out of this moment in being who everybody else says I should be and be who I really am, my true identity. And you, you mentioned this New Year's resolution thing. I might call those, as I thought about this episode, traps. There are New <laughs> yeah. Year's traps yeah. that we willingly put ourselves into every single year. Yeah. The trap of, I want to lose weight. I want to read more. I want to be a better person. All those, I, I guess, for whoever says them, thinks they're doing it out of a genuine desire to get a little better in their own life in some way, right? Yeah. But we do it in such a way that sets ourselves up for failure, is what I think, as I think about New Year's resolutions and traps. Because we're putting too much emphasis on the goal, the destination, and not who we really want to be and become in the process. And, you know, uh, James Clear, one one thing he talks about in Atomic Habits is trajectory versus position. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's so important. When you think goal, it it seems so far away. It seems unattainable when you get stuck. Yeah. Instead of thinking about the habits to get you 1% better every single day to put you on the right trajectory to achieve the goal. Yeah. And so I think it's important to have a goal. But it, it brings me back to the PDCA cycle, plan, do, check, act. You have to have a plan to get to where you want to be. Yeah. But you also have to have a plan on the steps to get there. That's then the you can do creation. the habit, correct. Yeah. And, I, you know, you know, Clear talks about being 1% better every day. Yep. Yeah. And if you do that over the course of a year, you're 37 times better than when you started. Damn. And he also talks about the British cycle team. Uh, they haven't – they hadn't won in 100 – over 100 years – and they brought in uh, this the coach, France. Yep, the Tour de France. Yes. So they, they brought in they brought in a surgeon to teach them how to wash their hands so they didn't get sick as easy. They painted their trailer white so that they could make sure all the dust was clean, so that their bikes would perform at a higher level. They tested fabrics that their their riders were wearing they had indoor fabrics and outdoor fabrics, and they tested them in a wind tunnel to see which one was more aerodynamic. They studied pillows, twelve different pillows, and how their riders slept, and they all used the same pillow, and they used it at home and on the road. And all those little things are just those are common things, right? Right, that it is done in an uncommon way that commands attention to the world. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, you know, they after they did that, their goal was to win in five years. Yes. And they well, they, they didn't achieve that. They won in three. I'm just going to sit here and soak all this in for a moment. And and they won five of the next six years. And uh, that's my goal for 2022 is to get 1% better every single day. 1% that, better. That's my goal, right? And so my habits are going to be doing the common things in uncommon ways. Mm-hmm. I like that. You, you know, first of all, thank you for such detail. 
in explaining the the concept and the idea yes. of how to get one percent better. In um, in your description, when we talk, when we bounced ideas back and forth about the show today, in looking at um, this idea of goals versus habits, um, you you ask the question, you pose the question, say, are you more goal oriented or more habit oriented? Mm-hmm. And what I find myself throughout my entire life is I've been habit oriented. So when you say I want to get one percent better. My mind is saying to myself right now, that makes no sense to me. But when I get very specific about the trailer's clean, this is the pillow that you use, mm-hmm. wash your hands in this way, mm-hmm. that makes sense to me. Yeah. <clears throat> and Clear calls it the aggregation of marginal gains. Yes. And yeah. if you're like Tyler, you've probably gone back and listened to Dave Brailsford, um, who is that cycling coach and was my goat in one of our early episodes uh, because James Clear has been – you know, a, a rock star over the last probably year and a half. So go back, listen. But Dave Brailsford and this whole aggregation of marginal gains, as clear as puts it, is is what gets us from that 1% better to 30 times better over the course of the year. And it's fascinating, and I love the I love that detail. It's awesome. What did you say, 37? 37 times better. 30 it, times better. You know, if you, if you take – if you get 1% better, if you take a number and you multiply it by 1.01 1. to the 360 – Fifth power. That's what you get. Of course you do. That's that's easy. and that's math, right? Yeah. That's not that's not uh, the real world necessarily, but um, but it is understanding the habits. It is right. And let's let's and talk. About, let's he talk. He talks about it. Like for instance, if you if you go to lunch today and, and you eat a burger and fries and which Dr. you have the Pepper, chance to do that, which you do. yeah, I had. But you know, it doesn't. When you at the end of the night, when you look in the mirror, there's no there's no difference, right? Yeah. But it's if the if you have those bad habits every single day, there's a difference. You're almost at zero at the end. Yeah. Or if you vice versa, you know, you do the right thing, time becomes your alibi, and that's what one thing James talks Ooh. about. You know, time can become your alibi or it can be your enemy, mm-hmm. and it's all about I like that making the right habits, making the right decisions over time. And I think that's a that's what we struggle with in America now. We want instant gratification, and I think we have to understand that. It's no, we're not racing against time. Time is for us. Just make the right habits over time, and time will be your alibi. There you go. So I would say totally agree with that, and I think what we're doing here is we're really defining or talking about the difference in a goal and a habit, right? And why why this whole conversation, taking it back to a year ago, habits being greater than goals, why is it important? So a couple of things I wrote down. A habit can be – easily integrated into our daily routine. It's not threatening. It's It becomes our new normal. To me, when I was training to do an Ironman two years ago, when I started that process, probably about the time I started reading this book, Atomic Habits, I, I thought, I want to I complete an Ironman. And somewhere along the way, it crossed my mind as that – that wasn't necessarily, if we're going to use the term goal, that wasn't the goal. It wasn't the destination. Mm-hmm. That was simply the the certification, right, day, where I just, it was an ex- extra long training day where people threw food at me the whole time. Becoming, the validation of the, it. The becoming was was really the, what drove the habit forming, right? Is yeah. what I, wa- I wanted to be an Ironman not complete an Ironman. It's the difference between the habit formation and the goal. Yeah. And here's the other thing, I think, in defining a habit. A habit, if you stop doing it, is no longer a habit. <laughs> and it seems very simple, right? But if I do something every day, it's a habit. And then if I stop doing it every day, it's not a habit anymore. So, again, how do we define the difference between these two things is important. Yeah, goals are to me are extrinsic, and and habit is something that's becomes automatic and it's formed. I, I got my um, COVID booster shot yesterday. Mm. Did not feel good all day. Slept during the day, which I cannot stand to do. I hate sleeping during the day. And um, had a fever. I thought last night didn't feel well. I texted my trainer at two in the morning. I took got the COVID shot yesterday. Um, not going to be there today. Five o'clock alarm goes off. No, actually, the alarm didn't even go off. Five o'clock, I, I'm up, and I'm like, I got to go. I, I got to go work out. And that's the habit. Mm-hmm. It's now a part of it yeah. to get up and do it every day. 
And so I think in the beginning, I would have not gone. And, you know, you said something where uh, you said that the habits are not threatening. I think the habits are super threatening Mm. in the beginning. I think to make changes that consistently over time, you're going to become part of your automatic routine, I think in the beginning are super threatening and very hard. Well, and maybe that's why people fail at them because they're they're, because they're setting up habits that are threatening, I might say. Right. So so I read a story recently about a guy in this in the idea and this concept of wanting creating habits to be who we to help us become who we want to be. Mm hmm. He said, I want to be a person that that works out and stays healthy. And for me to do that, I got to show up every day. Yeah. So the habit I want to form in the first couple of weeks is I want to go to the gym for five minutes every day. He wasn't trying to lose weight, obviously, being at the gym five minutes. He was wanting to form a habit of showing up. Yeah. That's not threatening. And I would say, and so for me, one of those things okay, is... Okay, I see what you're saying. One of those things is, too, like, I talk about, gosh, every year I want to I want to read more. So who, who who is it that I'm wanting to become and having that desire? Mm-hmm. And is it is it more appropriate to say, I'm going to read a book a month next year? Yeah. Or is it more appropriate or non-threatening to say, I want to read one page every single day of a book? And that's what I've done. And it comes from this, is that I, for the last... Three weeks. I want to. I'm going to read one page every single day, and I have. Yeah. And it's so easy to get in if I haven't read a book during the day, and I'm getting in bed at night, and I haven't read to say I'm going to read one page versus oh, I got to read tonight. And I'm not saying both aren't heavy, but I'm going to read a page so, versus. So, so, let me just get some reading in. So the takeaway for the audience is is de- to develop habits that become automatic is to develop non-threatening habits first. Yeah. That then give you the ability to, over time, get get 37 times better, 1% a day. And that yeah. page is 1% a day. So another- S- Speaking of reading, though, it, it's not the seven goals of highly effective people. It's the seven habits of highly effective people. That's right. And the, the other thing, another example might be, you know, sometimes, and, and I am, have done this in the past, have these big lofty goals, right? Like, uh, I'm, I'm going to do an Ironman. Some might say, I'm going to do 100 push-ups every single day. I might encourage my old self, and I might, as a takeaway for our audience, to say, rather than say these big lofty things, mm-hmm. rather than say, I'm going to do 100 push-ups a day, do one. And this is in no way saying, you know, reach for the bottom because it feels like that when I say it. But there will be days when you're about to get into bed at night and you haven't done 100 push-ups. Is it going to be easier to do 100 or do one? That's the that's where we incorporate these non-threatening habits because who is it that you're wanting to become? Somebody that commits and follows through with what we say we're going to do. And I think we all, there's that in all of us in some way. Commit and follow through Yeah, every day. And one of the things that, you know, for me, for the bottom line in this is one of the things you talk about is choose your heart. Yeah. Right? It, it, we talk about managing weight all the time, and it's hard to be overweight. It's hard to get in shape. It's hard to maintain the it's weight. Hard, it's hard to lose weight. It's hard to maintain weight, and it's hard to be overweight. Choose your heart. <laughs> choose your heart. Yeah. And I think that's a great practical tip when you're thinking about the motivation to develop the habits. I wrote three things, and it's all what we've talked about already collectively, okay. but I wrote three things. How do we create a habit? Very simply, we it's something you do every single day without fail, every single day. So it's got to be attainable, something you can do every day. Number two, it's got to be easily attainable and integrated, easily integrated into your current life. Mm. Like it can't be something that's going to blow up what currently exists because you may be able to do that for a while. Like the, the is it the 30-day 75 challenge? hard. 75 hard, right? You may be able to do it for a while. But at some point, you know, the, you're going to have other options that mm-hmm. come into play. Something you, every day, easily attainable, integrated. And number three, it forms the person that we want to be. And to me, that's the foundation of the whole thing. So rather than say, hey, I'm going to set a goal to do this, Talk about 
who you want to become. Like if you want to lose 50 pounds, rather than say I want to lose 50 pounds, who is it that I want to be that is 50 pounds lighter? Like what, th- there's something that's built between where you are today and where you're going to be. Let's focus on that. And really, it's the habit formation. Do it every day. What are the three things? Do it every day. Do it every day. Yeah. Number two, it's easily attainable or integrated into your current life. Mm-hmm. And it forms the person we want to be. Like the guy that went to the gym, right, every day. He, who he was wanting to be is somebody that shows up for his health every single day. Yeah. Show up. That's five minutes at the gym every day. He was building muscle formation in a way that we might not consider muscle formation when we're lifting weights. Yeah, the only, the only thing I would add to that in, ter- in terms of uh, practicality, and I've got a good friend that listens to the show, and, and his name's Karan Salata. Salata, did I say that right? Scalata. I'm working hard today. I'll let you know. Yeah, he probably will. But, but you can't get John's last name right. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, no hard Nothing feelings personal. if you didn't get it. <laughs> but, uh, but, but he texts me every morning, at five, or, or I text him at 502, are you up? And this morning, yesterday morning, there was a text at 502, and that's what got me up. So having that accountability, having someone that's there accountable with you to do that, I think is is just important Yeah. through the process. Well, to your point, a lot of people say, or or don't say, but and maybe don't understand it, but it's a huge part of progress is don't let the start stop you. Yeah. So to your point, you know, something like 75 hard, Work out 45 minutes inside, 45 minutes outside, drink a gallon of water, read 10 pages of a book, you know, all the take a picture every day, take your weight every day, stuff that you're not, it's not common for you. It's Those not are all in habits. your current life. It's not in your current life, right? And that's hard to go from zero to 100 real quick. Yep. So if you do the go to the gym for five minutes, read one page, and maybe you say, hey, month one, I'm doing this, or week one, I'm doing this, week two, I'm, I'm doing two pages and I'm doing 10 minutes at the gym. Week three, I'm doing 15 minutes at the gym, you know, and and make incremental changes over time. It keeps you from, it lets you get started. Yeah. And a lot of times if, if people can get started and do something for 21 days, like they say, it takes 21 days to create a habit. Yeah. That's when you start realizing I can do this. And by the way, I would kind of blow that whole, the tw- yes, agree with what you said. And I would say I'd blow the whole 21 days to create create a habit up because I'm not sure that really works because that's ultimately a goal. I'm going to do this for 21 days. And what we're not. hoping yeah. to do is build this these habits that get us, that evolve us as a as a individual, as a person, helping us constantly becoming who we want to be. Do it every day. Yeah. That's your point. Something you can do every day. The 75 hard, and I'm not knocking it. Maybe that helps jumpstart you, but that's not going to be your lifestyle for an ev- inevitable amount of time. Don't let the start stop you. Do it every day. Make it easily attainable and integrated into your life and decide the person that you want to become. Which is ultimately, for me, the foundation of the whole thing. Let's focus on, rather than the goal, why something becomes of interest to us which is the goal, right? Mm-hmm. I want to lose X pounds. I want to be in this role. I want to do whatever. And let's start about what, what is it about that that helps that once I get there, I'm going to be this type of person. Make that the focus. That's going to help us form the habits. 20, 2022 is the year to not get stuck, and you do that by focusing on habits that lead to, Absolutely. The, lead to the goals. For Thank Tyler you, Burnett. Claire. Thank you, James Clear and, and John Byers. I'm Colby Jubenville, and this is the Go Consulting Podcast. Boom. Oh.